My average screen time is eight hours and four minutes per day. At the point in time that I'm filming this, I am two months into a YouTube hiatus. So I don't know when this video is going to see the light of day if it sees the light of day. A background of my reading life, if you will. When I was in high school, I could sit down and read. I feel like everyone can look back at their past and be like, oh my god, when I was in middle school, I used to be able to read so much in one sitting. I would read like a whole book series in three days. So like, relatable? But a problem I've been encountering, um, probably for the past three years, I'm at the point now where I read like 50 pages and then I need a break. Am I getting old? Is that my social media brain shutting off? I have no idea, but for whatever reason, it has been years since I've been able to read. I mean, there's exceptions, like romance books are really fast paced, so I can read those in like two sittings, but the gist is I've never been able to settle down and read a book without at least some sort of distraction. I'm just, I should have tagged my phone because I'm just thinking about you right now. More specifically, I'm thinking about if I open my phone, Little Miss Twitter, and I have notifications and I wanna click it, but I shouldn't. Fun circumstance, my laptop is currently at Apple for repairs for the next few days. So if I really wanted to torture myself, I could make this a few day endeavor. I'm not. I borrowed my dad's laptop because I wanted to play Toontown. That's a sentence that I said as a 22 year old looking for a career. I'm gonna give this back and I'm gonna leave my phone wherever I throw it and not think about it because I wanna see for my own knowledge but also content, even though I'm not posting right now. You'll have to see this eventually. Merry Christmas if that's how late it is. <laughs> I wanna see what I can do if I put my mind to reading. Hi, welcome to a vlog of me potentially reading more than I usually do. This probably could open up a broader discussion about no, I'm not gonna get deep. Anyway, TBRs. I'm currently reading King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. I'm already 384 pages into this, which I didn't even realize I was that far, so. They gonna hate me regardless. That's why I do what I do. I picked this book up because Bonnie said I wouldn't like it. That information doesn't matter to you, but I need you to know that I'm only reading this because I'm a vindictive bitch. So yeah, this is taking me maybe four or five days to get this far into it reading about like 50 to 100 pages a day i could probably read this book in like six hours in one sitting so this book has oh i just saw a spoiler cool 500 pages which means i have a little over 100 pages left to go that could take me like two hours and i know that if i were on my phone i would watch two hours of buzzfeed unsolved instead i'm gonna try and finish this right now Hopefully by like 3 a.m. Okay, let's try this. It's exactly five seconds after I stopped filming, but I'm refilming because I just got the urge to go potty and usually I bring my phone with me. I'm sorry, I just cut off that sentence because I look like Albert Einstein, okay. Typically I would bring my phone, but I think I have to bring this instead. <laughs> Or like sit there and read a shampoo bottle like I'm 10 years old and I forgot my Game Boy. I just finished the book and I'm literally screaming. It's 3 a.m. That was my prediction that I was going to read this in two hours. So far, so good. Phone who? Should I do a mini review for this? I'll do a mini review. I feel like this is one of those books that I avoid giving a synopsis for because it's so well known. I would consider this like the Lady Midnight of the Grishaverse where you shouldn't read it if you haven't read the other stuff, even though it's technically is its own entity. So this is a book that is after both the original Grisha trilogy and the Six of Crows duology if you don't know what either of those things are maybe you deserve an award this follows Nikolai who is the prince from the original Grisha trilogy and Nina one of the six main characters of the six of crows duology in sort of their dual timelines how they're doing after all the events of their respective series going into this I knew the specific things that people weren't a fan of two main things the first one being that it was really really slow in the beginning I didn't think this was slow in the beginning really. I was actually having a fine time reading it. I was never really bored. I think for me this had the same pace the entire book which overall wasn't 
really fast paced, but I also don't think it was ever boring. I would just say that this book really didn't have like the exciting ongoing drama that the previous books in her other series had. So I think maybe that's why it's a little bit more, not difficult to read, but not as gripping. Okay, then the second thing that I always heard about this book was that our two main storylines going on individually are okay, but then they never really interact. You don't know why there's two completely separate avenues news that never actually come together. But here's <laughs> my tea. I don't think Nina's perspective needed to be in this book. I can't get over the feeling that I'm reading a book about side characters. Maybe that's why I'm not loving it. Don't get me wrong, the banter in this is great. I love Nikolai and Zoya, even though Genya and Zoya are literally the same person in my head up until like page 400. But yeah, despite all the issues, I called them issues, but like I really didn't have a bad time reading this. I loved the ending, even though I was spoiled. Again, I like the witty banter. The writing style's really beautiful. I have a couple quotes I want to go in my journal after reading this. I think I'm gonna give it like four stars. I will say this. I remember nothing from the Grisha trilogy and very little from the Six of Crows duology. And it really impacts the way you read this. This book gives you enough information to sort of get a hint of what happened previously, but it very much relies on you should know what happens, and I didn't. So I'm sure if I would have reread the trilogy before reading this, I would have gleaned a lot more from it. So that's done. I have a library copy out for The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo, which is a book in verse. I'm on page 18. I picked this up from the library because I knew I would be able to read it quickly, and I didn't know if I was going to enjoy it, and if it was worth paying full price for something I could consume very quickly. That was a long explanation just to tell you that I should not have had that fear because already I am obsessed. Little synopsis even though I'm not very much of the way through this. It's about a woman named Siamara. I should say young woman. She's a teenager. She's from the Dominican Republic. She's from a super super Christian religious family. They put a lot of restraints on her as far as controlling her interests and her personality almost. And as you can gather from the title this main character is really invested in poetry and takes a lot of her anger out in the ways that she is silenced into her poetry. The reason why I hesitated going into this and I got it from the library is because I feel like a lot of authors put the title oh this book is in verse because they write like a very short book and then they just do skips in the lines like it doesn't read like poetry it's not verse it's just like dare I say like modern poetry milk and honey just like a regular sentence put between six lines instead of one so that's why I was fearful going into this thinking it was just gonna be some regular old novel but skipped lines. Also, if you don't know what end verse means, it means it's like literally poetry format. But so far, if I owned a copy of this book, which I hope to one day, there's certainly things that I would tab in here. And you can really tell that because the main character is a poet, it shines through with her words. It's 3.40 a.m. I'm on page 64. I was gonna stop at 50, but it's super addicting and I literally am about to fall asleep sitting up because I'm so sleepy. The big challenge is going to be, can I go to sleep with Without scrolling on my phone first and then can I wake up tomorrow without scrolling through my phone for like an hour at the beginning of the day <laughs> it's a struggle right now not to roll over and just check my phone <laughs> I need to go shower and I'm running into a problem I have a shower speaker that I typically listen to music with but I also have an audiobook going the audiobook that I'm listening to is Becoming by Michelle Obama I'm gonna go shower <laughs> I'll shower. I have like two hours before I have to leave for Rosie's vet appointment. Little update, I listened to my audiobook while I was in the shower and then while I got ready and I was on page 26, now I'm on page 49. So doubled my page count, kind of. I know that this is gonna take me a long time to listen to because I'm listening to it so slowly, but it's worth it. I wanna be able to absorb every word. Maybe I'll continue this, but I also kinda just wanna finish this in one sitting because I have a feeling that I will. <laughs> so these are gonna be the two things that I work on until, you know what, I'm gonna try and finish this in one sitting. Let's do what we did last night and just get something out of the way. Beep, beep, 
boys. Oh my goodness. I have 45 minutes till I need to leave. I made it to page 246, but I am so hungry. I'm gonna go downstairs and make lunch. I think I'm gonna pause this and bring this with me to the vet's office and read this while I wait. I'm gonna take a lunch break, and while I do that, I'm gonna go back to my audiobook. I'm sorry, can we pause to give these cats some kisses? Hi, handsome. You're so comfy, look at you. Hi, Bubby. You all look like shrimps. <laughs> As long as Rosie is not screaming because she's in a crate, I'll try and listen to the audiobook when we're driving. I'll familiarize my gal with the best first lady of the century. Okay, we're done at the vet's office. She might make an appearance and scream like that. I don't know how y'all do it, but I cannot listen to an audiobook while driving. I don't know if it was because I was late to this appointment, so I was speeding the whole way here, and I was focusing on driving, but I did not hear a single word of the chapter I was listening to because I was so like busy focused on driving. So I'm gonna have to re-listen to that whole chapter when I get home, that did not work. But while I was here, I had to wait a little bit so I got to page 258 of the Poet X. Rosalie's doing well. I had to come back because she's got like a rash on her leg that won't go away. So I was gonna come back and see what else we can do. And then I ended up just paying them $50 for them to tell me to just wait a little bit longer and see if It'll get better. So that was $50 for a doctor touching her leg and then telling me, looks great, bye. You're so expensive. But I love you. Also the vet was like, where's her name from? I was like, it's from Twilight. And he was like, oh my God, I've been to Forbes. And we talked about it. I don't even know his name, but what are we? So I'm right now in my living room. I have about seven hours left of this challenge, which means I can certainly finish this. I don't think unless I read like a graphic novel or like a short book, I'm not going to be able to finish much else. But I'm going to finish this. I assume it's going to take like an hour or 45 minutes. I'm on page 258. I think I already said that. So 100 pages left. As the French say, Guten Tag. Finished the Poet X. May I just say, this book was excellent. I think I'm gonna settle on a 4.5 star rating for this one. First of all, loved the writing style. I like that this book is about a poet and you can tell through the writing style that that is her craft. I love the discussion of religion in this book, specifically with having religious parents but then not being religious yourself. A great discussion. I do feel like the beginning of this book packed a lot of punch, but I feel like it lost some steam in the middle and then it picked back up at the end. This book does poems about like her day-to-day -day life, but then when we get to actual like important big parts of her story, those occur in like one poem. So I feel like the climactic moments were really skipped over and I wish that there would have been more of a fleshed out description of what those events were like rather than focusing on like the mundane day-to-day -day life. But I like the resolution. It picked back up at the end. I finished the book and closed it and got tears in my eyes so I definitely really enjoyed it. Now I'm having an issue. I have my dinner here. Usually when I eat dinner, I watch YouTube or like Netflix, but I don't have a laptop. <laughs> so I think while I eat, I'll just like stare sadly <laughs> into my plate and I'll turn on my audiobook for this. I'm not gonna make this my goal to finish this. This is a 19 hour audiobook, so it would take me eight hours to read all the way through and I don't wanna spend six straight hours reading this. That's the point of this video, so I don't know why not, but I don't want to. <laughs> but I'll get as far as I can on audio. That's the point of this clip, okay. Okay, let's eat. I don't even know how long it's been since I last updated, but I had my dinner, I listened to my audiobook, I switched to the physical version because it was just going by a lot faster. I got to the part of the book where Michelle actually met Obama, so it picked up a lot whenever their storylines converged. So now I'm on page 130, which is maybe a third of the way into this. It's great. I feel like I'm getting to a point where I'm talking a lot about like, oh, it's gonna take me this long to read this, it's gonna take me this and that's too long and I want to read faster and faster. I feel like I've been conditioned that I need to read a bunch of things. I have to read fast because I envy the people on booktube that'll read a book in one sitting and it's easy for them and they love it. Because for me and I guess a lot of people that's 
hard. <laughs> I've been reading maybe like 40 pages of this without stopping and I'm, t I'm not tired but I'm kind of over it. Like I want to do something else and it's not that the book is bad by any means and I'm sure when I get back into it and I actually like am in the book it's not going to be terrible but this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> I read stretches of books and then I'm done and I think I want to be the type of person that can do a huge chunk of a book in one sitting but I don't know if that's because I envy other people and if that's a healthy wish. The reason why I hesitate switching to something else though is because Give me a moment. And she's back. I have also been in the middle of a book for months, which was the case with Becoming. I started Jane Eyre by one of the Brontes, Charlotte, Charlotte Bronte. And I started this, gosh, months ago. This is a book that has been on my TBR the longest since like 2014. So my goal was to read this and I was like it's gonna be so good. I love that. And it's been months and I'm only on page 70. <laughs> I feel like a realistic goal. Now I only have like five more hours of reading before this vlog is finished. I can't finish either of these books in five hours unless I put them on like three times speed audiobook and just tune out. <laughs> so I think the only reasonable thing I can do and something that I'm actually gonna try and be more mindful about so maybe this is the first step is establishing a goal and just getting to that goal and the goal isn't read the entire thing regardless of if you're absorbing every single word so rather than being on my phone for half the day which I do hold on should I go to my <laughs> settings and look at how much I'm on my phone recently my average screen time is eight hours and four minutes per day that's literally an entire work day I spend just like... I was just saying how it would take me eight hours to read this book. <laughs> so rounding back to my point, I'm doing this to be more mindful because I know the reason I haven't finished this is because I'm like, oh, it's a classic. I would rather not read that, but it's good. And I think eliminating the distractions that make me not want to reach for it is what's gonna cause me to actually finish it. So I'm feeling good about this book. It's interesting. I know I can finish it quickly. I have the audiobook. This one's gonna be the one where I'm on the struggle bus because it's gonna be harder to find the motivation to pick this up. So I'm gonna try and make a goal to get farther into this one. Hello, would you like to say hi? Can I have a kiss? Thank you. I'm halfway through volume one. Getting to the end of volume one is a realistic goal. Honestly, even an easy goal because I think I can do this in like three hours. I think I'm gonna get settled down and start this book. I am here with great pride to announce that I need to take an L. The goal was <laughs> to read until, I forgot what time, like 1247 I think was the exact 24 hour timeline. I fell asleep. <laughs> a big reason why I'm not productive is because mama needs a nap. I made a diligent effort to get more into Jane Eyre. I made it to page 82 so I think I read like a chapter and a half. <laughs> I'm not saying the book put me to sleep. I was tired already but the book didn't help. So rather than just being like oh no I fell asleep good night bye. I'm going to cheat. <laughs> I fell asleep around 8.30 and then I woke up at like 11.30. I'm going to give myself an extra three hours to read because I want to know like if I hadn't fallen asleep like what's the extent of what I could do. So I'm going to continue reading Jane Eyre. I'm going to try and get through part one. So let's go. So it's 2.10 a.m. I have been sort of making my way through this. I had a moment of weakness and distraction. So like 20 minutes I spent on my phone, which like, oops. <laughs> but here's the thing, this book is difficult to get into, but once you're going, it's like all by momentum. I'm currently on page 135. I'm actually only almost done with my section. I only have like one more chapter till I get to my goal. I don't know if anyone else does this, but I, get good at reading classics if I read them aloud. I like hearing it out loud. It makes it so that the words don't get like rearranged in my head. I would make the excuse that I'm reading to my cats but I don't know where they are. I think they're hiding under my bed trying to <laughs> silence me. I've just literally been reading aloud for like the past hour. I would say the first 100 pages of Jane Eyre felt a little bit aimless. I wasn't sure where we were going with it but then I got to like the middle bulk of it and then I saw the name Mr. Rochester. And now I understand. I feel like that's one of the names that's like Mr. Darcy, Mr. Rochester, and like all those classic literature men that everyone's like, ugh, 
nut now that I've sort of latched on to a plot point that I'm like ooh what's gonna happen um it's a lot easier going so I think even if I were to like not read out loud it would still be keeping my attention yeah if it weren't for this I probably would have only read like two chapters and gotten bored again and put it down but now that I'm like invested into it I'm liking it tag yourself I'm screaming boys are you snuggling oh my goodness we are back where we started. It is 3.43, which in four minutes will be the end of 24 hours. I made it to my goal. I finished the entire first volume of Jane Eyre. So I'm currently on page 175, where previously I had been like 100 pages less than that. I'm liking it a lot. It's really easily comprehensible, however, We've just gotten to scenes where Mr. Rochester and Jane Eyre are conversing. And I know that part of Mr. Rochester's character is described that he speaks really eccentrically and like he's really fanciful and doesn't quite make sense. But I definitely am gonna do a little bit of research and spark notes this because I don't quite understand their conversations, which is frustrating. And for a second, I felt kind of like I did when I read Pride and Prejudice because I was like, everyone loves this book and I don't understand a single word of it. I ended up getting to a place where I was like, okay, wait, no, I kind of get that. I don't know, I feel like if this book wasn't like wildly popular, I would definitely be giving up, but I'm kind of invested to see like, what does everyone rave <laughs> about it with and honestly i'm like not even halfway and already i'm just like what's gonna happen for there to be this many pages i really don't know what to expect but i know for a fact i would only have read like a chapter of this and put it down out of boredom if i weren't challenging myself to not be on my phone reading 100 pages of this in one day is definitely unusual for me at least. Maybe that speaks to the success of this video or maybe it speaks to the failure that is impending because I probably will still have this on my currently reading shelf on Goodreads for the next four months. We'll see. So if we're talking overall successes, here are the four books that I latched my attention onto over the past 24 hours. Three of which I was already into and they've been sitting on my currently reading shelf for up to four months. <laughs> Finished 150 pages of King of Scars, plus 350 pages of The Poet X, 100 pages of Jane Eyre, give or take 100 pages of Becoming, 700 pages in 24 hours. <laughs> I feel like I could have cheated. I don't want to say that because people do this video and I don't want to be like, ugh, they're cheating. But like if I would have read graphic novels, I could have read like 5,000 pages in one day. But for instance, both these books are tall hardbacks with small font and I'm reading a classic. So I feel like I'm proud of 700 pages in 24 hours especially considering I probably would have only read like 50 <laughs> if I had been on my phone this whole time. So that was this experience. I'm sure I could have read more if I didn't have to pause in order to take my cat to the vet in the middle of the day or if I hadn't fallen asleep at 8 p.m. But just to reiterate, like this would not have happened regardless of the success of if I, hi, regardless of the success of if I've read enough pages um, to make myself happy, I definitely would have read like six times less than I ended up reading. So I would consider that a success. Now it is time for me to take off my makeup and go to sleep. It's 4 a.m. Thanks all for being here. I don't know when you're watching this, but I really have no way to end this video. So, bye.